Hi, so what I want to talk a little bit about is cements. Now this grew out of the geopolymer stuff that we're doing. It's just an interesting aside, really. Now cements and geopolymers are very different. A geopolymer is a polymerization reaction. A cement is to do with crystal growth and interlocking of the crystals to give it the strength. So it's a very definite difference between cements and geopolymers. Now we all know a cement as a Portland cement. It's the one that we use gigatons of. And of course there's an issue with that in that the manufacturer releases a ton of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And because we use so much of it, there's a huge amount of worry about cement production and whether we can get cement production down. And that's where a lot of the effort has been going to. Now, somebody posted recently how I'd done something that was based on a technology about 100 to 200 years old. And I had to laugh because most of this stuff is based on a technology that's 100 to 200 years old. Just about everything is. Um, this one actually is based on something called sorrel cements. Now about 100, 150 years ago, a chemist called Sorrel came up with this idea. And there is an argument that that idea preceded him, which I wouldn't be surprised at, at all, that this thing goes back millennia. It really wouldn't surprise me. But let's take that date, shall we? Because that's what's in Wikipedia. Now sorrel cements are a different kind. Instead of using calcium oxide, which is what your Portland cement basically uses, it uses different oxides, the favourite one being magnesium oxide. Now you're probably well aware of magnesium oxide cements. You basically take some magnesium oxide and mix it with a phosphate and you get a cement. It's the one that is being used a lot and it's the one that people are exploring. But that wasn't the original sorrel cement. The original sorrel cement was in fact zinc oxide. Now I've got some zinc oxide right here, and I've got a massive tub of it because it's hugely cheap. This is the stuff that you find in suntan cream. So people are busily rubbing this over of themselves without any worries whatsoever because it's completely innocuous. You also find it in paints, that kind of thing. So you can buy this stuff by the megaton for next to nothing. It's really cheap and it's really easy to get hold of, and it is a beautiful white powder. Sorry, just dry my spoon. Now if I take a teaspoon of my zinc oxide and pop it in the middle, I need to mix that with something to activate it and make that cement. And what you mix it with is this stuff. What this is, is a saturated solution of zinc chloride. So you just take some zinc chloride, put it into some water until no more will dissolve, and you get a saturated solution. If I were to chuck that straight on there, then the setting time is almost instant. It's very quick. And this is one that I did. It's just a white block of these two components and it makes an extremely hard cement but it sets in seconds so the setting time is a bit of an issue so what you need to do with it is wet it first now you don't put a lot of water on if you put a lot of water on your drying time will be um, really high and you will reduce the strength of it but you give it a bit of a wet until it's a cream and there we go we get a stiff paste of zinc oxide now we can add our zinc chloride now the ratios of this are around about 5 to 10 percent. It's actually quite small amount. You can go up as far as 40 percent, but then it sets really very quickly again. 5 or 10 percent will give you a slow setting cement that you can actually work with. And then you just mix that in. And we make this beautiful white paste. That's got a much longer setting time. That'll take about an hour or two to set. And here's one that I made using that process, and that was made about an hour ago. It's still not quite set, but it is going much harder. It, it gets its full set strength over seven days. So in this time, if we use only the powder and the chloride, we'll get a rock-hard set very quickly, but with little strength, obviously. With this one, we get a longer set time. It'll set in about four hours, but it'll be absolutely set in about seven days. But it also increases the workability of it. Now the problem with the, um, these kind of cements is that they're not good for long exposure in water. These chlorides leach out and it makes it weaker. So they're only any good if we're going to use it in a non-aqueous system. Now Sorrel quickly abandoned zinc incidentally and he went quite quickly on to magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide is another one of those readily available mysterious white powders. It looks very similar to the zinc oxide. It's just a white powder in there. That's all it is. And of course the first thing that he did was mix that with magnesium chloride. And it makes sense. Zinc oxide, zinc chloride, magnesium oxide. 
magnesium chloride and they make pretty decent cements. That cement actually is more resistant than Portland cement to shock. So what they did with this stuff is make billiard balls out of it, which is ideal if you think, because they're, they're nice and white, they're good and shiny, and you can make a pretty good billiard ball out of them. And that's what they actually did with it, made billiard balls, which is cool. But it didn't stop there, because this stuff had exactly the same problem, it would still leach out. What he then tried, and this is the one thing that really amused the hell out of me, was this stuff, Epsom salts. This is magnesium sulfate. So if you mix magnesium oxide with magnesium sulfate, you get another sorrel cement. And I'm gonna give you a close up of that one. So this is 60% um, by weight magnesium oxide and 40% by weight Epsom salts or magnesium sulfate. And all I've done really is pop that into a blender so that we've got a fine powder mix. So that's a dry mix of the two materials together. If we lay out a little pile of it and add some water, we can mix that up. Now you really don't need that much water. And it makes a smooth paste pretty quickly actually. And the drying time on this is um, slow. So you're not going to turn this particularly quickly. Again, the drying time is related to the amount of water that you add, so if you add too much water, it'll take forever to dry. If you add too little water, it'll go rock hard really, really quickly. So you add a bit of water to get this runny paste. And then you leave that, actually in like that, for about four hours, and it will set hard, like that. So these cements that we're going through, rather quickly as it happens, uh, all have one key problem with them, and that is they're a bit sensitive to water. So if you leave them in a wet condition for a long period of time, those soluble salts will leach out and it will reduce the effectiveness of the cement. But they are really, really good in lots of other circumstances. Like I said, the very basic sorrel cement was used for billiard balls, fake ivory, it can be turned in a lathe, it's awesome stuff, but you've got to keep it dry. Now obviously that's a real problem if you want to use a cement. What you want is something that's going to withstand the moisture. And what they came up with was a variation of magnesium oxide, but hardened with an insoluble phosphate. Now the common phosphates that are used are ammonium and potassium phosphate, and they form insoluble salts. Now obviously they're phosphates, and the problem with phosphates is they're essentially this stuff. They're fertilizer. You could actually use this as well to make them hard. And that is um, seen as a challenge as it's um, creating a situation where we would be phosphate poor. There is another issue with the phosphates. They do tend to set a little hard, uh, a little quickly. But you can retard that by adding something like boric acid. So if you mix up boric acid and a, a potassium phosphate and magnesium oxide, you actually get a pretty good um, non Portland cement that will do an awesome job and that little recipe that I just gave you is in fact the famous one that's all over the internet that's what everybody is using but of course it is creating issues and, and the issues around that are the the phosphate lockup that's been created but it isn't the end of the story actually there are new magnesium oxide cements coming out and there's about three of them that I can think of there's uh, magnesium oxide with magnesium carbonate and water that forms one. Then if you leave the magnesium oxide in water for a little bit, what happens is the surface of the magnesium oxide actually reacts with the water and forms magnesium hydroxide. And what they call that is activated magnesium oxide. If you use activated magnesium oxide in your mixers, that also improves it. The one that I really wanted to show you, because the one that I really like, is magnesium oxide with this stuff. This actually is fumed silica. So it's silicon dioxide, and I've added water to the silicon dioxide um, to make it more handleable. And we're talking about the same kind of ratio, somewhere between 10 and 40%. Changing the percentage will change the characteristics of the cement. It will still be a cement, but it will change the characteristics. But somewhere between 10 and 40% of um, silicon dioxide, in my case fumed silica, and 90 to 60% of magnesium oxide. And you do exactly the same kind of things, you just mix the two up. Now it's quite hard to mix fumed silica because obviously it's extremely light and fluffy. Um, so I added the water to the fumed silica. 
what I would do then is add the magnesium oxide to that, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. So this is fumed silica. As you can see, it's quite light and fluffy. Now, this is the stuff that they use to thicken paint. It is a little difficult to handle because it's difficult to weigh, actually. It's such a large surface area and so light. You can use any silicon dioxide. It doesn't really matter. But the larger the surface area, or if like the smaller the particle, the better, because you get a more intimate bond, which is why I chose fumed silica. I could equally have just got the sil little silica crystals and ground those up and used those. So it really doesn't matter. I just happen to have a bank full of this. Small sized particles are great, and so that's what we're going to use. Now, as I say, it's a little difficult to handle it when it's like that. So I tend to mix it up into this silica gel. So this is just fumed silica and water mixed into this thick gel here. That's all that is. And you take a portion of your magnesium oxide. And mix exactly the same ratios that we've been talking about. So I'm just going to spoon a bit in. But you should mix exactly the same ratios that we've talked about. And just put in some water and silica gel and mix that up into a paste. One thing I love about these, actually, is how beautifully white they are. Again, it's water sensitive, so the more water you use, the longer it will take to set. So if you find you're having difficulty with the working time, then just use more water. But you will reduce the strength a little bit, actually. I should warn you about that as well. So you mix that into a nice white paste. Give it some time to set, and what you will have is a cement block. This one took four hours, and it tends to be that with the magnesium oxide silica versions. So that's a lot of information about non-Portland cement cements. They are enjoying a resurgence. It was like I say, this was, came up with about 100, 150 years ago. It's becoming very popular because of the concerns over climate change. Uh, Portland cement is extremely cheap, as I said, and these are tend to be a bit more expensive, especially if you buy them from a supplier, but it's actually a really, really easy thing to do to make your own from magnesium oxide. You take some magnesium oxide and mix them up in the ratios. You'll have your own cement. Now, you probably knew uh, quite a bit about this. The one thing you'll hit a lot will have been the phosphate version of the magnesium oxide. You may not have been aware of sorrel cements. If you were, you may not have been aware that the zinc oxide, zinc chloride, was the first sorrel cement. And it's likely, to be honest, that you're not really aware of the magnesium oxide, silicon dioxide cement, because that's actually pretty new, uh, and I thought was really, really interesting. So I thought I would share all those recipes with you, and, and some of the stuff on the various kinds of cements that you can make. And hopefully you enjoyed the video, it sparked some ideas in you, and thank you very much for watching.